Hi, welcome, welcome to our next Afro Future World Build. I'm very excited to have you. I have prepared this short, short lecture just to put things in context, explain a little bit about the Afro Future, and then let you know how to prepare. So let's begin. But Afrofuturism is a cultural movement that probably some of you have heard about. Um, it's been floating around, especially after the Black Panther movie. And it is a good example, the Black Panther movie, to some degree. Uh, it is about imagining Black bodies in the future, but also recontextualizing the past and the present. That means that we are pulling the legends and mythologies and cosmologies and spiritual practices of our ancient and near past and bringing them into the present. And then that reorients our present and helps us to imagine and manifest new kinds of futures that are based on our own desires and dreams and not based on the narratives that are given to us as subjugated, marginalized people. So this is a, an empowering sort of movement. This is all about controlling our own destiny. I do say here, if you look at the bottom, I say this is for all humans. So this is really to create a good, healthy relationship with Black people, but very specifically the Black body, because that's what gives the reaction, right? Um, and that's for both Black people and people of all backgrounds. This is really important to understand. And one other thing is that Afrofuturism does focus on Blackness, but we focus it on it as a culture, not as a race. Race is a, a very divisive kind of um, control mechanism that has been part of a colonial legacy um, or a, an enslavement le legacy to help defy, um, excuse me, to help identify and separate people. So in this context, we are using Blackness to really discuss a culture, but also to discuss how colonialism has identified, categorized us, and separated us, and just so that they can, or it can, the systems can, um, further oppress us. So Afrofuture principles. So Afrofuturism is multidisciplinary, and the artists or the thinkers behind it do kind of focus on several types of um, ideas and concepts that I have kind of pulled out. I have been active in Afrofuturism since the 90s. So right after it was coined, I learned about it and have been um, happily uh, playing in the landscape and in the sphere. And I learned that there are different principles that are at play. So we have um, ancestral and elder wisdom. For me, that is very foundational. That's why it goes under the foundation category. Um, without that wisdom, we're constantly starting from the beginning. We are going to really mess up a lot, make a lot of mistakes when our elders already told us, right? Um, we don't want to be quote unquote hard headed here. Um, we want to keep our ears, minds, open, but also really call in all that wisdom that has already been gifted to us. Uh, you see that pleasure is listed under foundation. I think that oftentimes when we're thinking about new worlds, new um, ways of being, the future, uh, I don't know if you've noticed, but a lot of sci-fi tends to focus on like labor um, and less about pleasure and how people are happy right? So oftentimes they're kind of actually just bringing the capitalistic kind of legacy deep into the future where we want to disrupt that. And we want to center other things like pleasure. We believe in abundance. Um, scarcity breeds fear. Abundance brings us together. Uh, and that brings us into process. 
We need a lot of trust and transparency, especially as black bodied people where the systems are always manipulated to discriminate against us. So we don't really trust a lot of the systems to actually care for us. Um, we are very much nonlinear, past, present, future kind of exists in the now. Uh, it always exists, it's eternal, it's infinite. Uh, it is not a linear kind of experience that we're having as humans. Um, and this is why when we think about like ancient and near past, when we think about elder wisdom, this is that energy, that past energy coming forth into our present, constantly creating the future. In this moment, we're creating the future. Every single millisecond, we're creating a future. Um, and then there, of course, is the long future. Uh, and that's what we're going to be engaging in for our world build. And we don't want to be afraid of transforming, right? And then there's manifestation. Uh, so we have the foundation, we go through the process, and now we want to manifest what we're thinking about. And how should we do that? Let's do that through co-creation. Also, let's not be afraid to experiment. Let's think outside the box. But of course, we want a justice-oriented experimentation. We don't want to cause harm in our experimentation. We're experimenting for good. We're taking risk for good. We're fighting for good. Uh, and mutual aid. We want to make sure that there is a balance there, that we are always taking care of each other as we're manifesting. We can't just push people aside, extract, exploit. Uh, no. Here, we care for each other and manifest in harmony, in balance with each other, with the earth and all its living beings and with the cosmos and all its living beings. So the Din Kinesh method is what is um, the framework for the world build. It goes through different phases. And I kind of created this uh, actually during my grad school. Uh, at the very beginning of it, uh, I am a foresight practitioner, and which means that I know how to research the future uh, and was trained academically. Uh, and so I thought maybe there could be a way to really organize the process for imagining futures. And I'm gonna go deeper into that in a minute, but the Dinkinesh method is really about cultivating that Afro-future consciousness. So this consciousness that is about co-creation, a pleasure, abundance, for especially those who are marginalized um, and been pushed outside of the center. We're going to recenter you um, and we're going to feed your consciousness so it can shift. And this is the part of decolonization, right? So our minds are really been trained uh, to think and to have perspective in a particular way. And so I want that consciousness to shift so that our imagination is as expansive as possible. And so what does that look like? Well, first, let me introduce Din Kinesh. You might have heard of her. She goes by Lucy and the West. Um, she was born 3.5 million years ago in uh, what is now Ethiopia. And I was really curious about Lucy um, simply because I just know that she has to have a different kind of name if she was found in Ethiopia. And she does. Her Amhetic name, which is a language uh, in Ethiopia, her Amhetic name is Den Kanesh, and it means you are marvelous. This is really important to me because every time I'm saying Den Kanesh, I am not only acknowledging that there was one of many Black women that are the beginning of all of humanity, uh, and this for me is us coming together under that umbrella, um, but also I get to, to acknowledge the, the beauty in you, the marvelousness that makes you you. 
And that's what we really want to kind of expand upon. Imagine from that place. So that is why we start with living myth. We want that mythical to come in of ourselves. How do how can we reimagine ourselves? And the reason, the reason for this is because we put a lot of limitations on our minds. And so I am trying to kind of break open those limitations by creating another identity that then we feel a little different, you know, um, we might see the world in a different way. And so living myth allows us to really dive deep into creating that mythical identity. And so for the world build, I'm asking you to create a name for your mythical self. You might already have one. Um, what is your power? Um, how do you feed it? Who are the ancestors? What do you wear? How do you move through the world? Um, what's your impact? Uh, or what's your agenda? What's your goal? What are you fighting for? And what are you fighting against? All of these things matter because from that place of the mythical self, we will be moving and imagining of the futures. Uh, and again, this is just so that you can feel free to, to think about the moonshot, go crazy. It, it's fine. It doesn't have to be quote unquote real. And also you'll be surprised. A lot of things that you imagine that you think is wildly experimental is actually in development, but that's a whole other conversation. And so dark matter is about systems. What I found is that we're constantly reimagining the same system over and over. It's the, the system that we understand and we might be comfortable with that system. But honestly, we have to really think beyond these systems. What other kind of economic system can we think about? Because capitalism really exists in this kind of, um, in a binary, in order for there to be wealth, there has to be poverty. Um, in order for people to become super wealthy, there has to be some level of exploitation, extraction, subjugation. So what kind of other economic system can we think of that has never existed? Is there, is there an economic system that can plug into the earth, the riches of the earth, and help us to exchange um, resources in a way that is balanced and in harmony? that can exhibit mutual aid. This is one of many systems, right? How can we um, reimagine education systems? Uh, how we secure and safeguard our communities? You know, what are the different ways that we can distribute food and make sure that everyone is able to eat? There are different types of systems that we can reimagine. And this is your opportunity to really kind of grow crazy and imagine that. Cosmic magic. This is where we bring in the spirituality that's been pushed to the side. I want to bring in those folk tales that um, kind of circulate within our family families. I want to bring in the legends, the stories, the superstitions, the rituals, the practices, those things that our grandmothers, our great grandmothers told us about, um, about how to deal with certain issues. This is important because spirituality, our spiritual practices, I believe is where true liberation lies. And thinking beyond our religions, not instead of, but beyond in the sense of kind of expanding our spiritual belief system to include these uh, practices that have evolved over time um, that really speak to the otherworldliness of our lives. 
that magic is important and it can exist and be brought into our present and daily life if you haven't already brought it in. And then alter destiny. This is where I want you to consider different um, emerging practices, uh, excuse me, emerging technologies, emerging sciences. There's a lot on the horizon. And in fact, AI at this point, artificial intelligence, to me is no longer emerging, it's here. But how we're using AI is still in emergence. Um, blockchain technology, it's still pretty young and we're still trying to figure it out. There, but there's so much more. There's nanotechnology, there's quantum physics. Um, they figured out a way to communicate with bees. I mean, technology and science right now is fascinating. And so to bring in some of the those things that are on the horizon in development and to play with it with what you're imagining, I think can be really fascinating and create something um, that maybe is even unexpected for you. So Alter Destiny is where we actually build the world. So we're bringing all those other elements together. Your mythical self is in creation mode here. Um, it is looking at the systems that you reimagined. It is looking at the magic you want to bring in and the tech and the science and creating this new world. Uh, and so Alter Destiny is the shift. And then there's the continuum. The continuum is a phase that is just for you. This is your own um, ritual for imagining futures. I find the um, just imagining period to be a very sacred act because you're calling forth whatever you imagine. So also be careful. <laughs> but also it is ongoing. Many Afrofuturists talk about the continuum. They don't necessarily talk about the future um, because the future kind of calls forth for a lot of people a linear um, goal setting kind of perspective. And what we want to do is expand that and say that this is a continuum. Um, we are continuing uh, the, the dreams and the visions from our ancient ancestors, from our grandparents, from our parents. This is an ongoing conversation uh, that I'm hoping after your session at the World Build, you are more inclined to kind of dive into and really focus more on your future's thinking skills. The possible has been tried and failed, and now it's time to try the impossible. This is Sun Ra, our godfather. He is a jazz musician um, who said that he was from the planted, oh, excuse me, planet Saturn. And uh, his music was to transport his people to Saturn and to so that we can experience liberation. And so here he's saying that we've done what is real. We have done the linear. We have done, um, we've assimilated. We have, we've done everything and we're still in an oppressive state. Um, we're still fighting for power. We're still wanting to be able to just walk down the street um, without being harassed by police. Um, we're still wanting to experience certain freedoms. So let's get into that impossible. And that's what I want to call for. What is impossible? Let's make a world that's filled with those impossibles, those good, just impossibles. All right, so preparation. Uh, I would love for you when we do this virtual session that you sit in a place that is a, what I call a sacred space. For me, this is a space where I have my altars. I travel with an altar. Um, I surround myself with my crystals. I always have my, my tea, my water. 
Um, I have these things around me because they comfort me, they empower me, they ground me. And this is what I want for you. I want you to be in a place that hopefully you have control of and that honors um, those who have come before you that make your existence uh, possible. Um, but then also you have items that you can grab onto and hold that will, you know, comfort you if you feel a little triggered in imagining certain things or considering certain things. Make sure you know what your area of research, what's your future focus? Um, we discussed in our world builds, you know, the theme is quite, quite broad. And then within it, we can talk about various elements, you know, housing and health and education. Um, what are, what, what do you want to focus on? Now in the world builds, I will be breaking you up in different groups. So you will be having this conversation with someone else, but it's nice to just kind of come in with some sort of awareness. And if you could do a little research, what's on the horizon in that area of focus? What, um, what's being built? What new tech is being created um, within that arena? Um, so that then you have something to contribute in terms of building that world. And mind you, I do want to say you don't have to use the tech as it stands today, but you know that the tech is built at this point or they're, they're having, they're experimenting here. So then let's imagine there, right? Let's just push it even further. So it's really just a source of inspiration. And speaking of inspiration, um, bring in, you know, some items, some, some images, you know, to discuss with your, with your, um, with your group. What, what do you want to share that, you know, what piqued your interest? What, what kind of article did you read or book did you read or film did you see that inspired you to think of, um, certain aspects of this world that you're building? Uh, I think that that would be really helpful to contribute. And really what I'm asking for is to kind of feed your brain intentionally with this future focus so that when you come to the world build, you can just play with all your toys. All right, so don't forget. Do not forget to create your mythical self. These are some questions for guidance. You know, what is your mythical name, power, skill, mission, focus? Um, what do you want to accomplish with that power? What is your relationship with the ancestors, the cosmos and earth? Um, how are you feeding and in, in your, your powerful, um, your powers? What are you wearing? And, um, and also, what are the ancestors that are guiding you in this? Uh, and then also choose an object that, um, that you can wear, you know, that, that reminds you of your mythical self so that when you're out in the world, and maybe, you know, this happens with some of the, the clients I coach, you know, they might feel a little uncomfortable and then they look at that item and then they move into their mythical self and now they're empowered. Now they're grounded. They, they can now operate from a different identity, um, which makes whatever the situation much easier to move through. All right. So I am looking forward to meeting you, meeting your mythical self. When you come onto the Zoom, immediately change your name to your mythic name. That, that is the only name we're going to call you throughout the entire three hours of our world build together. Um, I'm very excited to see what we, what we can co-create. And if you want to learn more beyond the world build, we have classes. We, you know, I do coaching. Um, there's images to buy. Definitely come visit us at, at afrofuturestrategies.com. We would love to have you. Thank you so much. And I will see you soon. And be, feel free to email me if you have any questions. 
may the Afrofuture be with you.